Well, guten Tag. It's wonderful to be back with you once again. And uh, I know that we have had uh, a long stretch of time since our last uh, Deutsche Klasse, but uh, let's uh, get started. So, uh, everyone, guten Tag. Heute wir lernen Deutsch. And today, heute is Klasse Nummer. Well, why don't you count along with me? Eins. Zwei, drei, vier, fünf, sechs, sieben. Today is Klasse Nummer acht. Yes, acht is the number eight in German, as we re remember from before. So, it's time to do some review of some of the things that we have learned over the last week. So, what have we learned? Well, in the very first lesson, of course, we learned that German, or Deutsch, is a language that is spoken in many countries, including Germany, Austria, and Switzerland, the three flags that I'm showing there. And then, of course, English is widely spoken, but of course, in Western Canada is the predominant language here. So the first thing we had to learn is we had to learn some greetings. Let's see how many of these you remember. Remember, good morning was Guten Morgen. Try that. Then Guten Tag, Guten Abend, and Gute Nacht. So let's try all of those. Uh, repeat after me. Guten Morgen, Guten Tag, Guten Abend, and Gute Nacht. Then we learned some other things like how to do introductions and how to ask how people are doing. So we learned V Gates and the answer gut, danke, nicht so gut when it wasn't so good. And we also learned how to do introductions. V heist du, how are you named? And ich heiße, and then here you can fill in the blank with your name, and you can try it saying it in German. So let's go to the top of these. I'll say them, and then you can repeat. V Gates. Gut, danke. Nicht so gut. Wie heißt du? Ich heiße. All right, very good. So we also learned some very basic words that are important in any language, like yes and no, thank you, please, and how to say goodbye. So let's try those. We learned ja and nein. Danke, bitte, and auf Wiedersehen. And let's not forget, of course, the short version when you say goodbye of tschüss. So let's try those all. Let's try them all together this time. Ja, nein. Danke, bitte, auf Wiedersehen, and tschüss. All right, excellent. Now we also learned, of course, this was fun. We learned how to count in German. So let's see how well we remember our zählen, our numbers, our counting in German. Oh boy, here they are. So let's try and see if we can remember without the words. We'll show the words in a minute. Let's try them. I'll, uh, uh, I'll say them first and then you can repeat. Eins, zwei, drei, vier, Fünf, sechs, sieben, acht, neun, zehn. Very good. Okay. Well, let's maybe make a look at ourselves and see it all written out in words. And we'll say these all together. You ready? Let's begin. Eins, zwei, drei. Vier, fünf, sechs, sieben, acht, neun, and 
18. Very good. Now, we didn't stop there. No, 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 we kept on going. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Very good. All right. So, we're going to take a look at them in the words all written out. Okay, let's start from here and let's do them all together. Ready? Begin. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Very good. Well, let's hope that you all remember how to count up from 1 to 20 in German. What were some of the other things we learned? Oh my goodness, we learned conversation. Some words that mean things like I am and you are or we are. So we learned, for example, ich bin, which is I am, du bist, which is you are, and wir sind, which is we are. So let's try those words all together. Ready? Begin. Ich bin, du bist, Wir sind. Okay, and of course, if we're saying I am and you, we are, well, we have to have some words to fill in the blanks. And we learned the word for happy, which is froh, sad, which is traurig, hungry, which is hungrig, thirsty, which is durstig, and tired, which is müde. So, let's try these. Repeat after me. Froh, traurig, hungrig, durstig, müde. And I hope you're remembering how you say those tricky words. Well, I think we all remember this chart. Uh, this is a chart of the family tree. And we learned all the names of our family members in this one. Well, of course, we started with right down here with this person here, and that was, of course, was ich. And we went up the year to this person here, very important person in our family. That was our Vater. Over here, we have this lady here who is also very important to us, and that is Mutta. Now, if you have brothers and sisters at home, I'm sure that uh, you need to know their, how to say who they are, too. So over here, this young lady is your Schwester. And over here, this is Bruder. Schwester, Bruder. And then if we go up to this very top row, these very important people here are Großvater. And Großmutter, okay, grandmother and grandfather. But as we learned, we usually say the shortened version of them. And I think you will all remember that one was Opa. Say that all together. And over here we have Oma. Let's say that all together. Oma. Very good. So let's say these all together. Ready? Opa. Oma, Vater, Mutter, Schwester, Bruder, and of course, ich. Very good. All right. Well, that was, that was fun too. I remember that. Then, what did we do next? Oh, yes, indeed. We learned our colors. Or in German, the German word for colors is Farben. Farben. Well, let's have a look at some of our, the Farben we learned. These eight to begin with, and uh, obviously you know what those are in English, but let's review them in German. This is lots of review here. We have Grün, Gelb, Orange, Schwarz.
schwarz, rot, blau, lila, and weiss. But I think you'll recall we learned three bonus colors in the following weeks afterwards. This one here, does anybody remember? This was rosa. Yes, rosa. And this one over here, well, that one was brown. Brown. And then over here, that one, the color is grau. Grau. Okay, let's uh, say these all together. Repeat after me. Grün, gelb, grau, orange, rosa, schwarz, rot, blau, lila, braun, weiß. Very good. Yes, we learned all our colors. That was a lot of fun. And then another thing that we learned that was really important, of course, is all about time. We learned that the German word for minute looks very much like the English word for minute. Minute. Hour is Stunde. Day. Well, we knew day from before, from Guten Tag. Tag is day. Woche is week. Monat means month, and Jahr means year. So let's try these all together. We'll say them together. Ready? Begin. Minute, Stunde, Tag, Woche, Monat, and Jahr. Well, we also learned the days of the week. And remember that just as our days, most of our days, end in the word day, most German words end in the German word for day, Tag, with one exception, of course, and that was Wednesday being Mittwoch, midweek. So, I'll say the word and you repeat after me. Montag, Dienstag, Mittwoch, Donnerstag, Freitag, Samstag, and Sonntag. Excellent. Very good work. We not only learned the days of the week, we learned the months of the year. You'll remember that many of these are very similar to the names of the months in English. So, let's just say these, repeat after me. Ready? Januar, Februar, März, April, Mai, Juni, Juli, August, September, Oktober, November, and Dezember. There we have it, the 12 months of the year. And you'll remember that there was a lot of similarities between English and German. We also learned three very important words for describing yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So the word, the German word for today is heute. The German word for tomorrow is another word you've learned before, morgen. And the word for yesterday is gestern. So let's repeat those after me. Heute, morgen, and gestern. Excellent. Very, very well done. Okay, well, let's see what is next. Oh, I think uh, we all remember this lesson, and uh, we learned about animals, or Tiere. Oh, yes, and here they come. Together, we learned the names of 16 different animals. Now, we're not going to repeat all of them or review all of them right now, but we will do a few. So, let's take a look. Okay, anybody remember who this is? This is a hunt. Yes, a hunt. Okay. Okay. 
Everybody remember? This was a Katze. Katze. <laughs> that is a, remember it starts with a PF sound? Pferd. Yes, a Pferd. Yes, we all remember her. That is a Koo. Yes, Koo is cow. Oh, yes. A donkey. Remember the name word for donkey in German? Esel. That's right. Esel. Oh, boy. He doesn't sound very happy. That's our friend the lion in Deutsch. Lion is Löwe. Löwe. Let's try that all together. Löwe. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Well, remember this guy. That was our friend, the Affe. Affe. Does everybody remember the story I told about the visitor we had in our yard? And the funny German word for skunk. Anybody remember it? Stinktier. Yes, a skunk is a stinktier. That's one that you probably won't have too much trouble remembering. All right, excellent. Well, this was so. Then we learned how to ask questions in German, and that, of course, was important. And in fact, the very first question word we learned was in the very first lesson we asked why, and that, of course, was warum. We also asked wie, as in wie geht's, or wie heißt du, which is how, wo, which means where, wann, which means when, wer, which means who, and welche, which means which. So, let's try these. Repeat after me. Warum, wie, wo, wann, wer, and welche. Excellent, excellent. Very important words, of course, to be able to ask questions. Well, then we had a lot of fun. Remember Mahlzeit? It's mealtime. Yes, mealtime. And we learned the words that surround us when we are eating. And we talked a little bit about making a trip to a restaurant. So, let's give that a try. Let's have a look. Let's see if you recognize some of these important so, first of all, the meals of the day. Well, we have to do those for sure. The meals of the day in English, breakfast, lunch, and supper. In Auf Deutsch, we have Frühstück, Mittagessen, and Abendessen. And remember, Mittagessen comes from midday eating. Abendessen coming from evening eating. So, let's repeat after me. Frühstück, Mittagessen. Abendessen. Excellent. Very, very well done. Okay. Well, let's see which of these words we remember. Remember the word for this? This is the Tisch. Yes, Tisch is the word for table in German. And this, another one that starts with the letter T. This is a Teller. Teller. Yes. Very important word. <laughs> you want your food on your tela. And we need something to sit on. And that would be the stool. Stool. Let's say that all together. Stool. Well, we need one of these to cut our food. That would be the mesa. Say that all together. Mesa. One of these as well, and that, of course, is the fork. In German, it's the Gabel. Gabel. And finally, as far as utensils go, that is the Löffel. Right, the Löffel is the spoon. And the room where it all gets prepared is the kitchen. In German, kitchen is Küche. In the Küche. Very good. And we learned that, for example, this is a cup, or in German, is a tasse. 
Everybody remember that? Tasse. Okay, excellent. So, what do we have up next? Well, next we're going to go in the restaurant. We're going to go to the restaurant. And you'll remember we made a visit to my cousin's restaurant in Germany, to the Restaurant Sparenburg. Well, let's see. Uh, that, and that was a picture of the Sparenburg, the fortress that sits on the hill overlooking the city of Bielefeld in Germany. So, to the restaurant. What do we do at the restaurant? Well, we have to ask for a table. And in German we say, Ein Tisch für zwei Personen bitte. So, a table. For two people, please. And then we might ask, Was gibt's zum Essen? Let's try that together. Was gibt's zum Essen? What is there to eat? And then the server will probably bring you a folder, which we call menu, and in German it's die Speisekarte. So we would ask, die Speisekarte bitte. Let's try that all together. Die Speisekarte Bitte. Okay, well, what's on the Speisekarte? Let's have a look. Ho, 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 Remember this meal? Oh, delicious. A piece of veal that has been pounded flat and then soaked in egg and in flour and in breadcrumbs and then fried in a fry pan. And it is often served with red cabbage up here and a lemon slice and some potato wedges. And this is, well, this wonderful meal is called a... Wiener Schnitzel. Let's try that all together. Wiener Schnitzel. Excellent. Oh, that looks good, doesn't it? Another very famous German word, or German dish rather, is all these sausages here, and this, this sitting in this nice bed of pickled cabbage. All the sausages are called Bratwurst, and the pickled cabbage is a very famous German dish called Sauerkraut. So let's try saying that all together. Bratwurst mit Sauerkraut. Okay, Bratwurst mit Sauerkraut. Oh, delicious. Oh, and then side dishes, too, we talked about a little bit. Well, this one was the little German noodles that are made with the dough that you drop into the boiling water, and then they cook up into these little noodles that look like this. And these are called Spätzle. Spätzle. And if you're not in the mood for noodles, you maybe want something made out of it. They have one of these. And they have different names in different parts of Germany, but they're made from potatoes. And they're a potato dumpling. And so, auf Deutsch, they're called a Kartoffelknödel. Let's try that. Kartoffelknödel. Or the shorter version, and the version that I grew up with, or at least that I called it when I was growing up, is Klöße. That is a Klöße. Okay. Well, you need something to drink afterwards, and probably Germany is very well known for this over on the left. This is Bier. And over here, also well known in parts of Germany, is their wine or Wein. Bier, Wein. So pretty easy to remember. Of course, we ask how to ask for the food. Ich Hätte gern den Bratwurst, bitte. I would like to have the Bratwurst, please. So let's try that all together. Ich hätte gern den Bratwurst, bitte. Or you can say, Ich hätte gern den Wiener Schnitzel, bitte. So now you know when you go into a restaurant in a German-speaking country how to order your meat. Well, of course, one of the things that you'll get asked at the end of your meal is etwas zum Nachtisch, something for dessert. Well, I think the best choice, I think anyway, is this wonderful meal that is a, baked in a layer of pastry dough, and it's got a beautiful apple filling inside, and this is called Apfelstrudel. Let's say that all together. Apfelstrudel. Oh, it's a delicious. All right, excellent. Well, when the meal is over, we want to tell our server that it was delicious. So we say, es war köstlich. Let's try that all together. Es war köstlich. Or you might want to just say this. This is a German 
equivalent of yummy, we'd say lecca, lecca. And you do have to pay for everything, so at the end of the meal, you ask the server for die Rechnung bitte. Die Rechnung bitte. The bill, please. All right. Well, that was the material that we learned in German. But, of course, every week during our classes, we also did something else. We listened and learned a little bit about music and about German-speaking composers. And let's see. We learned about these seven gentlemen. And let's see if you remember some of their names and the music they wrote. So, there's the seven pictures. Hopefully you'll re recognize a few of those folks. And now let's play Name That Tune. Okay, we're going to make them disappear. And we're going to play a little music. Does anyone recognize this? One of the most famous symphonies ever written. And this symphony was written by this gentleman, Ludwig van Beethoven, or just Beethoven. One of the most famous German composers ever. Okay, so now you're all warmed up and know what to expect. Let's try our second piece of music and see if you can recognize it. Well, this is a very familiar and a very pretty song. I, if I could see you, I'm sure many of you are conducting your orchestras in front of you in the class. And this is a very beautiful waltz. It's called the Blue Danube Waltz. And it's written by someone who was called the Waltz King. Does anybody remember who the Waltz King was? Well, it was this gentleman here. Does anyone remember his name? This is Johann Strauss. Johann Strauss. Johann Strauss II, because his father was also a composer. Okay, let's see who's next. Let's see if you recognize this one. Such pretty music, right? Okay, well, I'll give you a hint. He's very, very popular in the country where he was born and where he lived his life. And he died very young under somewhat mysterious circumstances. And there's a chocolate named after him. Who can remember who this was? This was Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Yes, that was Mozart. That was the Eine Kleine Nachtmusik from Mozart. All right, well, we're just about halfway through all these. Let's have a let's listen to the next one. This goes all the way back to the very, very first German class we had. The very first composer we learned about was this gentleman here. Does anybody remember his name? Johann Sebastian Bach, J.S. Bach, one of the greatest German composers of all time. Okay, well, let's see who's up next. Whoa! That's pretty dramatic sounding music, isn't it? Well, that dramatic piece of music was written by this gentleman. Does anyone remember his name? That was Richard Wagner. Yes, that was Wagner, and that was the Ride of the Valkyries. Yes, the Ride of the Valkyries. Well, that's a pretty rousing sort of song. Let's see what's next. Maybe one that's a little bit on the other end of the scale. Just listening to it must make us yawn and be tired because that is 
the most famous lullaby that's ever been written and it was written by this gentleman and he is does anybody remember the lullaby it was the Brahms lullaby yes Johannes Brahms wrote that and finally the last song and you might remember what you're supposed to do when you hear the orchestra and the choir singing this let's see if you remember All standing up, standing up for the Hallelujah Chorus, right? And the Hallelujah Chorus was written by this gentleman who was born in Germany but lived most of his life in England. And of course, the king stood up when that was sung, and that was George Frederick Handel. Yes, Handel, the famous German born composer that lived most of his life in England. Well, those were seven composers that I'm not sure you may have known about some of them before we took the German classes, but certainly that was fun learning about them in our German class. Well, this is a piece, a kind of music that's maybe also very traditional, and I wanted to play it for you. Actually, my plan was to play on my Alporn, because I have one of these. This is called an Alporn, and this is a piece of music that... Uh, uh, this is an instrument that is very popular in uh, the alpine parts, the mountainous parts. And uh, one of those alphorns is about 11 feet long. And uh, they're, they're tricky to play. Uh, and I had hoped to be able to play it for you on the last German class. But of course, since uh, we're not in person, all I can do is play you a recording of these three gentlemen playing on their alphorns. It's very, very pretty. So, what have we learned? When we think about it, you know, we have learned an awful lot. I thought to myself, what have we learned? How many words have we learned? Well, so I asked, wie viele deutsche Wörter haben wir gelernt? Remember, wie viele, how many? We learned that too. Wie viele deutsche Wörter haben wir gelernt? How many German words did we learn? Well, does anybody want to take a guess? Well, I'll tell you, we're going to show them all on the screen right now. Oh, my goodness. Wow. That's a lot of words. Do you know how many words that is? That is 162 words. Or in German, we'd say 162 Wörter. Wow, you should all give yourselves a round of applause. 162 words. That is a lot. Well, boys and girls, that brings us to the end of the 8th German lesson, the Achte Klasse. And that was going to be the last class that we had in German. I want to tell you that I had viel Spaß. I had a lot of fun teaching you some German, and I hope you had viel Spaß too. And so, to sign off today, I say... Danke, thank you, danke, auf Wiedersehen and tschüss.